I think we don't teach men to value their bodies as we teach women do. And we have to teach them to value their bodies as well because there's so many young men that go into situations and now I have a sexual assault case. For the Netflix and chill generation. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like a good topic to raise. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Amani. We appreciate it. You're in the WNBA on the Atlanta Dream. How long have you been playing professionally? I'm coming up on my third year pro. And you weren't always with the Dream, right? You were... Yeah, I was drafted to Chicago in last season. At the end of last season, I was traded to Atlanta. Do you like that, that draft process? Do you, do you wish you had more control over um, where you got to play? Not really. I think coming into it, you just want a job. Like yeah. Last year in Chicago, I asked for a trade because the situation just wasn't really good for me in my career. So I wanted to be traded to a team I thought I had more potential with, I fit the system better, things like that. And so you were kind of born into this like sports dynasty. Yeah. Your, mom, <laughs> your mom is Pam McGee, who won a gold medal for basketball. Um, she's like a champion. And then your brother also plays. Yes. And he plays for the Golden State Warriors. Golden State Warriors. Why did you decide to go into like the family business? Um, for me, I really wanted a free education. And I never played basketball growing up. I was really late to it. I was always around basketball. Like I watched my brother play, I watched my mom play. I was like really into theater and mm. reading and music. So I did everything but sports. And then my freshman year, I had to choose between playing varsity basketball or being in school play. Getting to college was the biggest thing, so I chose basketball. Do you consider yourself to be a role model? Inherently, because of the position I hold, I'm a role model. You know, like little girls look up to me that want to play basketball when they get older. But I think being a role model holds a lot of responsibility. And I'm not sure if I'm ready to assume that as far as responsibility yet, but I definitely am. I always say, like, I want to be the person I needed when I was younger. So, like, that's my striving goal to make sure that I'm somebody that my younger self would look up to or want to be like or right. can feel proud of. What I think is great is not only do you have this awesome sports background that people can like look up to you about, but you also um, shed a lot of light on causes that I know are important to you. You've been um, pretty open about like your childhood and I think you struggled with depression a little bit. And why do you think it's important to kind of um, talk about and be open about these kinds of um, issues that people face. I think that just as a society, we're very closed off, and that isolation makes all these problems worse. Depression is worse when you're isolated. Sexual abuse, sexual violence, all these things are worse because you feel as though like you're the only person that's experienced this. You're the only person that understands how you're feeling, and you kind of just keep digging a deeper hole. So I think it's important to have these conversations, and it's easier to prevent things that we talk about. I never want anybody to go through what I went through growing up. I was in a, a lived with negligent and sexual abuse, and all these things may have been prevented had I known to say something. I think if we have these conversations sooner, if we talk about these things sooner, it's easier to prevent them, and we create an open discourse where you don't feel scared to say something in your household. Yeah. You also said in, in an interview that it's important to show every aspect of the person. So it's important to show someone as a work in progress. I think, especially for this millennial generation, social media, you want to put up the most, yeah. you know, photoshopped picture on Instagram. You know, talk to me about that. Talk to me why you think it's important to kind of show every step of development. I think, like you're saying, with social media, we see everyone's amazing moments, right? We never see the sad moments. And especially with the way we categorize mental health in the media, we see someone jumping off a bridge. We see someone's perfect and never cries. We never see that in-between moment or how they got to this point. If we don't show the in-between, like, we yeah. can't help to understand that, like, we don't, everyone doesn't have it all together, and right. that's okay. And like my goal is just to create, like I said, to create discourse, create more open spaces where people feel more vulnerable and feel comfortable giving a little bit more of themselves. Do you have any other plans for how to kind of, of what you might be you know, working on in the future to kind of create that discourse or? Um, yes, so I'm working on starting a nonprofit right now and like perfect life, like perfect situation. I would have like different conversations at high schools, kind of like, Let's have an open conversation. Um, and I've done one, uh, and we just talked about sex, we talked about relationships, and it's scary to hear the answers that we have at 14, 15, 16 years old. I think we don't teach men to value their bodies as we teach women do. You know, like a girl grows up knowing, like, if I have sex with five guys, everyone would call me a hoe or a mm -hmm. slut, whatever the case may be. But men, they think about the opposite way. And we have to teach them to value their bodies as well because there's so many young men that go into situations and now I have a sexual assault case or whatever the case may be. But realistically, I shouldn't have been in that situation. She shouldn't have been in that situation because we both weren't able to make that decision. 
That's um, such a good point. Yeah. But we don't talk about consent like that. You also just had a book of poetry published. Yes. Tell me about that. I appreciate the poetry community. I think it gives you a space to be more open, be more vulnerable. Um, and I went through a very big transition. I got divorced. Mm -hmm. um, I was married to my college sweetheart. We've been together since 17. And just that entire process of like learning who I was without a relationship. Yeah. That entire process just kind of gave me a lot of really good work, and I felt like it was really important, so I published it. So. Yeah, and I think it's great to have someone in the sports community who stereotypically is a little bit more, there's a more of a front, so I think it's really great what you're doing and kind of nourishing all these aspects of yourself and doing, you can be an awesome center <laughs> for a you know, basketball team and also write a book of poetry. I think it's really, I think that's just what we're doing now as a unit, right? Like you've seen DeMar DeRozan and Kevin Love come out and speak about their struggles with mental health. Mm -hmm. I think it's good that people are willing to have this conversation and willing to give a little bit of themselves, especially NBA players because we see them as superheroes. Like yeah. they never go through anything. And in reality, like they have their own struggles in their own lives as well. And them being human doesn't make them any less strong or any less than. That's just like we all go through our own things. Right.